Hello, my name is Rich. I use the he, him pronouns. You're watching my YouTube channel where I play amazing tabletop role-playing games with friends. This is Star Wars Saturdays played on a Sunday because it's got to be Saturday somewhere. I just like the alliteration and I'm also too stubborn to call it Star Wars Sundays. We are playing a four shot of Apocalypse World Burned Over. Now, Apocalypse World is this seminal over 10 year old RPG that launched a thousand ships of power by the apocalypse games. Uh, and in 2020, I think in a zine quest for Kickstarter, Vincent McGay Baker released a hack book version of apocalypse world called burned over. They continued to develop this on the, on the side. And in September of last year, they released an update that I really like. I feel like they tweaked some things that I had concerns about, fixed some other things, and it's pretty cool. So we are playing that, but reskinned for Star Wars. Now, uh, not all the playbooks are, are, are presented here. Of course, we've got four players, but I also disallowed a couple of playbooks. So I just didn't feel... Like uh, either either I didn't want to deal with them or they uh, they didn't feel a super Star Warsy. So you, you you don't worry about it. It's fine. The ones that everyone's chosen are really interesting and will uh, push our Star Wars canon in interesting and new directions. We are playing uh, almost two ish years after Palpatine has died. He fell down a hole. No one will ever see him again. He blew up in a Death Star. Obviously, he's gone. The New Republic is rising and freeing the galaxy from the last vestiges of the Empire. But there is still this holdout, this sector of the galaxy known as Zinj's Empire, under the auspices of a former Grand Moff named Zinj, who declared himself warlord of the Empire because he wanted to bring... Uh, the empire back where he hasn't given up control and within zinj's empire is a very ancient mythical and scary place known as dathomir now dathomir is a planet that's been featured in a number of star wars canon uh the first time that i really saw anything to do with dathomir is in the clone wars series the animated series where they talked about the night witches which were these force wielding uh but not jedi not sith all female dathomirians who were served by night brothers who are the zabrax such as darth maul and i thought that was really fascinating and interesting in the clone wars Count Dooku and the the droid army ravaged Dathomir, uh, but in Rebels, I, if I remember correctly, there was a return to Dathomir. Rebels is another animated series, so there was a return to Dathomir that took place during the uh, the Rise of the Empire timeline, and also uh, there's some death a, a whole level of Dathomir in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order whole lot of canon stuff but guess what none of that shall shackle us uh but just as a heads up it's a red planet it's supposedly where the rancor come from it, it it's all yep oh look at you fair you're like i was i was you got me you got me got like support it's so good uh so it's, it's where rancor supposedly come from uh there is a very heavy presence of the force on Dathomir because of what we've seen with the night sisters and like it's a desolate planet however in fact if you look behind alan you'll see uh, a, a very fascinating picture of Dathomir. it is very mid like canyons and red clay and everything is in red so if you think about star wars and the idea of like hoth the ice planet and uh like we have the jungle planet we have the tree planet everything is one particular bios biosphere uh dathomir is the red canyon planet uh one of the things i was i was watching before game started i don't know why i'm blathering i apologize uh i was watching a little bit of the jedi fallen order level because there's just some great imagery and i love the idea of uh, like all this everything hewn out of the red clay and uh everything just looks so ancient it's it's neat and there are cool 
symbology and uh, not Arabish, all kinds of cool language things going on. That's enough blathering about because it is time for us to meet our players and hear just a wee bit about their characters. I'm going to start from the left-hand side of the character keeper heading towards the right, which means that, Ferret, you get to go first. If you can introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your character. Hello, I am the Majestic Ferret. I use any and all pronouns because they are mine to use. And I am playing Yuka, the Volatile. If you have uh, seen any of the Bounty of the Week, you remember Yuka the Wrong. She, and the last time we saw her, she was headed to Dathomir. So it felt like a proper uh, time to reintroduce her. She is the Volatile, which means she's packing as much firepower as a first-person shooter hero. I have an RPG. I have a gravity hammer. I have an Omni tool. I have a Wookiee blaster. I have an illegal heavy bolter. I have pretty much anything and everything I need to do violence with. And I am here to, uh, well, uh, play with the force and uh, kick ass. And I am all out of force connect uh, sensitivity. So let's get this on with. <laughs> Making me a laugh, Fred. That's great. Thank you so much. Next up is Alan. Uh, hello, my name is Alan. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm playing Crix Aaron, also he, him. Uh, Crix is a human. Uh, he, I'm using the Undaunted playbook. Crix is a slightly uh, imposing, slightly dour, plain spoken individual. Uh, goes with the terrain, really. Um, but he he is peculiarly connected to some people. He has some close friends. In the playbook, it's called children, but it doesn't mean they're children. So, uh, yeah, and he makes a living. Uh, I think he probably makes a living in some kind of greenhouse. He's got a green finger. He sells food. Uh, and, and, you know, he just wants to keep his nose clean and keep the people that matter to him safe. Uh, and the people that matter here, to him are... Uh, Grim, uh, the brazen and fearless, who will go among my enemies and return. FXT, a skilled pit droid uh, with tools, a maker. Um, and sorry, I keep trying to keep him in view. Oh, can't seem to do that. Uh, Grabble Var, uh, who is a devoted weak way, willing to stand in death's way for me. And Ravida, a Twi'lek dancer, an artist of bodies in motion who can captivate eyes and hearts. Uh, a most unlikely band to be attracted to this slightly dour human. Indeed, and I look forward to exploring why each of these folks are attached to Cricks. And I think we can do that in, in game. We'll do it when it's appropriate. That's gonna be fun. Next up, we have a person who's willing to get up at the butt crack of dawn, Cody. Hey, I'm Cody. I use the he, him pronouns. And I'm playing Bayo. Also uses the he, him pronouns. I'm using the Vigilant Playbook. Uh, Bayo is an intense, sleep-deprived Zabrak. Uh, descended from those Night Sisters, Night Brothers of Dathomir, though he's, he was never raised in it. So he's kind of come back to Dathomir, kind of like a find his roots uh, a journey. Um, and when he arrived, he discovered that he can in fact see the wolves of the maelstrom and they appear to be shadows. They look like people, but they have empty holes for eyes and are dripping with gore. Uh, he is, yeah, I, I don't know much more to say about him just yet. He's, he's intense. As I said, he, he's trying to find what his people were like, though he never lived it himself. Uh, and so that might cause some uh, friction with a certain other member of the party. But um, yeah, that's him. Wondrous, wondrous and wonderful. I am excited to see. Are you saying Bayo? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, Bayo. Okay, B cool. yeah, Bayo. Bayo, Bayo. Like Bayo Wolf without the wolf. Like it's that. almost like I just listened to two different translations of Beowulf in the past week and a half. Yeah. Oopsies. Mm -hmm. And last, but certainly not least, frequent member of Star Wars Saturdays. Always a delight to play with. Steven, you're up. Um, hi, my name is Steven. 
Um, my pronouns are he, him. Um, today I'm playing Sin, um, whose pronouns are she, her. Sin is the uh, brain picker playbook. Um, so she's weird, super weird. And um, uh, she is a night sister acolyte. Um, and she has come down her, you know, most of her people were, were decimated. She's been living off in the wilds and is kind of not that familiar with the rest of the um the strangers in society and seems to seems to believe that she deserves uh she deserves you know to be taken care of and she deserves you know things that aren't necessarily hers and i hope in play we see that she's super weird yeah We'll do our best. Yeah. I think you are, you're imminently equipped to bring out the weird. Fantastic. After hearing about all of our characters, Stephen, if you will kick things off, I'm going to transition from referring to each of you as uh, by your name and start using your character names. So Sin is how you're, you're pronouncing the name. I want to make sure I'm saying it. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sin, uh, you've got some HX to hand out. We'll do one, 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 one until we uh, get to the end. So. So my H oh, that's right. Questions. Yours is for everybody, right? Yeah, I think uh, so. I have a question. I have two questions. One is, um, are you uncomfortable hanging out with me? And the other question is, is do you find me dangerous? I'm absolutely uncomfortable with you. Awesome. And that you means are just the kind of random fluky thing that can screw things up for ordinary people. Yeah. I think you uh, misread the other one. The other one is, do any of you seem dangerous and unpredictable to me? Oh, okay. Thank you. Have I, have I interpreted that wrongly? Oh, no. You're right. You got yeah. both right. Yeah. 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 I think uh, Bayo is uncomfortable hanging out with Sin, but only because he wants so badly to, to prove himself to her. Uh, that he's very on edge about um, doing things the right way, uh, in quotes. Um, so I think it's, he's very eager, but he is, he's not comfortable yet. Great. And if I push things too hard, Cody, just let me know. But yeah, I'll probably try and be a little bit haughty. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. And I think I am very, I mean, with the amount of weapons I have, if I'm not dangerous, you're very disturbing to me. Uh, do you think you're dangerous? Oh, yes. Yeah, so I think I'll put you down as dangerous. Yeah. Nice. Uh, let's swing back to Bale. Yeah, so my history question. Are you a wolf of the maelstrom? If yes, say what they look like under their disguises. And uh, if no, in literally any other answer. So, uh, Sin, are you a wolf of the maelstrom? Yes. All right. Crix, are you a wolf of the maelstrom? No, I don't think I am. Or if I am, I don't know that. Okay. And Yuka. Are Fuck around and find out. <laughs> no, you, you know, I yeah, because I've just realized it, it's not just a yes, no, literally any other answer. Um, I think that from Crix's point of view, I don't think he believes that these things exist. So how can I be one? Oh, then that will change my answer to yes. I will uh, say yes then with like sin. I am. Oh my lord, there's so many wolves here. So, oh, so you can, you're just you're just flat yes. Yeah, I will say that uh, like she looks like under her disguise, she looks like she's covered in gore, but her shadow seems like it is uh, literally so, like sagging, like it is trying to be dragged under the ground into the hell she has created. Okay. Dang. Well, that was easy. Uh, yeah, the next is pretty easy as well. I just have one question, and I'd like a straightforward yes/no answer, please. Yuka, should I take you to be a threat to me or my family? Yes. 
B.O., should I take you as a threat to me or my family? No. Sin, should I take you as a threat to me and my or my family? Yes. Yeah, I guess that much. Well, dang. I have fun ones. Uh, I'll ask this one first, then. Have any of you fought shoulder to shoulder with me? I think it would be interesting if Crix has a more violent background than his current presence. Okay. Present. So I think I'd like to ask answer yes to that. Yeah. Do any of you think I am the problem? Yes. I think Bayo does. Bayo's here to kind of find his spiritual center and you toting around all these weapons. It, it goes against his whole vibe, actually. Nice. And uh, do any of you honestly need protecting? I don't care from what, but do you need protecting? Um, absolutely. Um, I think I need protecting, but I don't know it. Yes. So you have to kind of do it in spite of me. Yeah. That, and I, oh, oh, yes. And you are an upcoming night sister. This is perfect. I wouldn't say upcoming and experienced. Yeah. Potato, potato. We'll see. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Oh my goodness. This is, this is wild. So uh, that takes care of all of our HX, correct? Good, 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 good. In the NPCs and places, there are a few places that I've thrown out just because one of the apocalypse world burned over things is a hard zone where you have some defined locations uh, the place that was used in a previous run of Dathomir was the hard zone of the Fallen City. In the ancient ruined city, skeletal skyscrapers standing or leaning together collapsed clover leaves, neighborhoods and business districts now blasted, shattered, and fallen. The locations within the Fallen City consist of the spaceport, Kilometers of open scrub and broken ground worked by struggling farmholds overseen by a high central tower and compound. Chiaroscuro, uh, an open mercantile community, sited under the fallen overpasses and along the tracks of an ancient industrial center. Moribund dwellers in the ancient city's underground vaults and tunnels. High market a trade and barter town occupying the third and fourth stories of a dozen ruined buildings connected by bridges over the roadways, defensible and locked down. The Inn Road, once a marvel, a cantilever Duracrete bridge 100 meters long, soaring almost 50 meters above what was once a running river, now a filthy, impassable muck. The bridge is the only way. It's barely passable itself, but still the toll takers hold it. The Soul Tree, a massive stone building with a collapsed dome and flanking towers with a wide, clear margin all around it, still scattered with Duracrete barriers. A strict and menacing cult makes it their home. And the Well an enormous circular pit ringed with Duracrete ledges full of drinkable water. Hundreds of people come to it every day and no one knows why it exists or how deep it is. So, I think each of those are interesting and that Sweet. is where we will begin with our session. So let's start off with Crix Aaron and his family. Where among this fallen city do you call home, Crix? I think because I've chosen as my, uh, my scavenge, in addition to a good luck and a green thumb, you have a calculating streak and you know how to wring the most out of what you have. Uh, so I think that probably my market garden 
is located in Kiraskuro. Okay. But maybe I take some goods up into the high market to trade sometimes. All right. So you you call Kiraskuro home, home, but occasionally travel to high market. And I would imagine, you tell me if you feel differently, but I would imagine that Kiraskuro has less for a dancer like Ravida than high market. Yeah, I think Ravida has to travel to work. Do, does your family, do, do you guys have a, a shared place where you all um, call home? I, I, no, I don't think we do. I think, uh, I, I, I mean, they're, they're called children in, in the playbook. I don't think that we are a single household so much as a connected, uh, as I say, you know, found family. Um, and so, you know, we look out for one another and we all bring something useful to the party. Nice. So, for instance, FXT uh, is is probably just you know fixing stuff around Kiraskuro. Uh, Grabor might be working security for you know somebody uh, you know around Kiraskuro. Um, Grim uh, Grim is. just grim nobody asks grim what he does they don't mess with him back uh, and as i say ravida i think probably travels to to the the more upmarket bits of town where she can earn more but then comes home to kiraskuro because that's where her found family is nice i like all that breakdown that is pretty cool <laughs> i just saw a comment in chat and i thought that was pretty funny good what about Cricks, what do you do? Let's see. Let's, let's let's follow you around for a little bit. What's the kind of place that you live? Um, well, I think probably um, because this this is a this is not an easy place to live, no. and so I think that uh, Kiraskuro is described as kind of the arches underneath a, a, a former highway, isn't it, of sorts. Um, an open look at our sighted under the fallen overpasses and along the tracks of an ancient industrial center. So I think that probably what Crix has done is to replace some uh, some roof tiles uh, to turn it turn a, a reasonably big warehouse space into a, a combined home and greenhouse. Um, and and I think he that that maybe he's got a good. You know, uh, I'm, I'm imagining lots of strip lights uh, providing the right kind of wavelength to grow stuff that is perhaps not not uh, naturally occurring, uh, maybe more valuable, because I can't imagine what's growing under that red light. Um, and and it, it, is there is there atmospheric pollutant here? I can't remember. That's a mighty fine question. Uh... I don't think so. It's, it, it is a challenging ecosystem. Comfortable atmosphere, challenging ecosystem. Yeah, perpetually bathed in a red mist, but it's not a dangerous red mist. So, yeah. so, um, so I think that you know, as 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 everything inside this greenhouse looks slightly odd because it's brightly lit, um, and he's growing green plants, which is unusual. But everything's seen through this peculiar gray mist, which renders everything a kind of muddy brown in there. Why is he grew, growing green vegetables? Is that all he had seeds for? Or is that a personal preference that he seeks out because of a memory? They're Why? rarer and therefore uh, they sell for more. They're more I difficult see. to grow here. Because um, the reason I have two two bar and not one is that I ring most of what out of what I have. I, I, I have a calculating streak. I see. Excellent. And maybe, you know, 
FXT is is you know bustling around fixing the water supply you know just making sure that the water flow for the the self-watering system is okay uh, and uh, you know I, I imagine leaning on the doorpost having a long chat with um, uh, Grabo Var about you know shooting the breeze yeah so we pick up Grabo Var he is between jobs uh yeah He's, he's between jobs as far as you know and he's fingering the 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 little he's got one of those little clasps over his blaster holster you know and he'll he'll snap it closed to show oh yeah we're we're peaceful we're all peaceful and right now he's just playing with that little flap as he leans in cricks Saw some, saw some people snooping around outside. I don't like it. I don't know if they, if they're just hungry or if they know what you're raising here. Look, Va, um, you know how we play this. We keep our heads down, keep our noses clean, and the world goes by. Be fine. Worlds goes by until the world takes notice, Cricks. You've got a good thing going here. There are people who want what you've got. Okay, show me these people. Who do you? Who do you... He smiles. He's 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 happy that you're listening, and uh, he'll turn and start to head out, and he will lead you out of your area and when he steps out of the the greenhouse area itself and i'm imagining like this is star wars so a domicile will be larger than maybe you need uh and there's a lot of like panes of glass that you have within the greenhouse to keep and contain all of the moisture that you're able to pull in with moisture evaporators and the like we step out, there's a bit of a red mist that comes across, and you see a few people that were that are huddled in this alleyway that's nearby, and they, they scamper away. And Grubble says, Yeah, yeah, keep moving. And, and I and I put put a hand on Grubble's sh- shoulder and say, Oh, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, and uh, and I say, can I help you? And it's quiet. There's no response. You hear the shuffle of a foot you know, as they maybe like pivot their foot while they're hiding behind something. I, I, I go towards this, this alleyway. Um, is there a problem? And as you start walking towards the alleyway, you hear behind you gravels like, walking he's doing that thing that he does where he's trying to get to where he's got a good view of whoever it is so he can shoot them and fill them full of holes without having to worry about shooting over your back or accidentally hitting you you know it's okay it's okay who's in there nice so so are you more interested in coaxing whoever is out of that little dark alleyway or are you more interested in trying to get an idea of what this is going on in this situation i i think the first objective is to get them out and then to have a conversation you know it's it's okay come on come on so is that sway someone i think so let's have you sway someone the first dice on the virtual table you're going to be rolling plus cool which is plus two you are very cool Cool's the other side of the uh, and that gets me a, a complete six. Plus so two we, gets me to eight. Okay. Dancing with about death to say, already. So don't forget to mark cool because oh, you yeah. have rolled that stat. Uh, with a seven to nine result on sway someone. Uh, if they don't want to go along with you or refuse, they can choose to ask you for evidence, time a compromise or some concrete assurance. And I think... I've got a... Comp- I, 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 I'll send Grabble Var 
away. I say, Ra, just, you know, back Death. off. Go, go check on fix it. Okay. Just have a chat. That is exactly what they would have asked. So you, you intuited it very well. Yeah. Don't worry about him. He's, he's fine. He's a friend. Gravel gives you this, like, you came out here to where I said it's dangerous and you're sending me away. This is the worst idea. Relax, Just... Bo. Relax. It's okay. You know, if you're good Grimaces. to the world, the world's good to you. Going inside. If I hear any trouble, he calls back as he's oh, walking. Just... Oh. You hear the click of him like popping the button and then pulling it free again as he steps back inside. And then uh, you wait for a moment, but you see face move out of the shadows. Maybe a meter tall because they're hunkered down so much. But you see the the wide eyes to know that it's, it's someone small, like a child, perhaps. And then you I'll, see. I'll a, hunker down as well. Let's get a, on a level here. Nice. As you move down, they start to kind of climb forward a little bit, and you see a few more pairs of eyes, like this one's the scout, the bravest. It looks like a Togruta child. And Are you from around here? Blinks a little bit. Is it time to read someone? Uh, I think it is time to read someone. Uh, that's not what I'm great at. So I'm rolling flat for, for that. You're rolling plus sharp. You do get an wow. answer. Oh, it's an 11. Oh, my. I do get an answer. You get an, um, so uh, you hold three, but you get one answer like off the top. This Togruta child, I think it's male, it says no. That was the answer of are you from around here? Um, I, what, what, I mean, what are they, what's their predominant emotion here? Is, is this, is it hunger? Is it fear? Is it fear for themselves, fear for somebody else, fear for something else? It's, it's hunger. Uh, there is fear that's keeping them at bay, but you can see from the gaunt look in this boy's cheeks and the sunken eyes from the girl behind him, they're not all to Gruta. Of the five, three are. Uh, but you can tell they've reached that point where they're this close to breaking into that garden to take. Because it's a garden to them. It's got to have food. That, that gives me the answer to what are they thinking of doing? Um, and my third Sorry. one is, <laughs> and, and my third one is, how could I get you to come with me? Offer them food. I say just desperate just, enough that they'll trust they'll trust you at least for a little bit until just sit tight for a minute and I back off um and I, I flick the door up and say fix it um bring me that melon uh and he, you know the melon <laughs> you give me the one that that's you said is all rotten and we don't want it anymore all right no no fix it the big melon you know the, the one I've been saving melon. I've been saving it. Oh, all right, no problem. I'll be right back. And and keep eyes on on the children and and just you know wait wait to feel the weight of the melon. And, and they're like whispering back and forth to each other, and the little Tagruda boy that you've been talking to. Says, no, 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 melon. He said a melon. No, it's the rotten one. We're getting the rotten one. No, no, no. He said the good one. The good one. And and you know, into I feel the weight of this big melon in my hand, uh, and again I hunker down. And I and and then you know, I got a box cutter, a little knife, a gardening knife, and I just section it up, and I put the four sections down in front of the door, and then take two two steps back and say, "Come on in." It's 
warm in here, it's safe in here. Cool. So you are you're offering the melon. You've cut it up, but it's inside your space. Yeah. They have to come out of the alleyway across the little space to come into the light. Yeah. And there's 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 a long moment. And then finally the Togruta boy comes out. And when he does, uh you notice he is he's rail thin. He's wearing just rags at this point but the rags look like the material used to be of good quality nice quality so it didn't withstand a lot of the whatever has happened to these these five over the last period of time that's passed while they're here and he moves forward and the other you see four pairs of eyes just watching as he walks across that space. He's barefoot. Um, and when he gets close enough, you see on the side of his neck, there are some tattoos in like markings, like you have Mark. Uh, as Rich pauses for a moment to double check our safety and roller. like you would mark cattle um and i'm hoping that that we close out that initial scene mm -hmm. with um with them in a little circle in the greenhouse digging into the melon yes while i say to 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 gravel bar dangerous they're in danger not dangerous bar Hmm. You just brought it to our doorstep. Sometimes you need to do the right thing. And we'll cut away from there. Uh, so I would love to open a scene with two PCs in it at the same time. Does anyone have ideas? Yeah, I could see uh, <clears throat> Bayo sniffing around uh, Sin and trying to get her attention, trying to trying to learn the ways of of the Night Sisters and Night Brothers. Where are you, Sin? Where does Bayo find you? So I think Sin has her own place that is back in the moribund. It's like a cavern, you know, a, a hidden cave. But I think most of the time she's out either. Uh, preaching to the cult at the soul tree, telling them about how wrong they are, or she's in the high market demanding tribute. <laughs> and she's native to, the, so she knows this area. She knows the fallen uh, city she, well. She doesn't know the fallen city. She's okay. been here a little while. She knows uh, some of the wilds, like the mountains, and has come down from there. Okay. And I, let's say she's actually in the in the high market and she's walking around and it's not quite, you know, a gang shaking down merchants, but it has a little bit of that feel to it. Um, you know, going in and saying, you know, I like that, you know, uh, fruit. I like that. I'll take it. She doesn't get any of the off world stuff like what Cricks makes and sells. Um, she kind of avoids that, but yeah. And I think that's where we'd find uh, Bayo is in that market. So let me ask you, Bayo, have you just discovered sin? Well, we have we have HX, so maybe you you've been tracking sin for a while. Do you think? I think it's it's more. Um, I think he's not been tracking sin. I think he's he's found her and maybe they've interacted just a couple of times once or twice um not not too frequently not too often but um yeah i i think i think he's at least been able to like go around to when when since preaching at the cult kind of like listening like okay is this is this the right stuff and and he kind of looks amongst the, the cult members and he doesn't see any other night sisters night brothers he doesn't see any zabrax uh that stand at him so he's like okay this person must know what they're talking about 
and then he'll he'll kind of uh, up you know part of um Bayo is his uh his scavenge he, he'll provide valuable resources services to people around him so i think when when sin is in the market asking for um food or whatever it is she needs he's ready to hand over a a, a fresh kill and and then and look up and say um S- sister sin you know and and kind of pick her brain for a minute cool uh yeah so sin at some point you've reached a, a moment to take a pause when you see a Zabrak male approach. You've seen him around. And I think that um, he's he's provided me with tribute in a way that I feel better about this process. Like, I think because he's provided me with some food and things like that, he, he might know his place. So what do you do when he comes closer? Tries to um, get your attention. What do you do? I think I um I try to ignore him, but it's not a very good job, right? So you come up and you know, I you know, glance your way, but you don't get close enough that I consider you dangerous. So I just continue. I think I'm eating out of a bowl. And it's one of those things, you know, you use your fingers to dip the food out and, you know, put it into your mouth. And um, I think I'm just, you know, eating and quietly. I think this is kind of in an alcove. This isn't um, like sitting down at a table out in front of the bright market. You had to search me out. You know, we're up against the corner. And I think um, so... Do you just want to approach? What do you think, Bao? Bao? Yeah, uh, uh, I, I I come up to you, um, Bao. He's he's younger. He's probably mid twenties. Uh, despite my character keeper image, I think he has uh, longer hair um, covering around his horns. He has tattooed sigils of protection uh, that sin you don't recognize as being kind of official <laughs> or or authentic, as it were. Clearly, he got these done somewhere else. Um, and and he kind of run, scurries up to you, and he's just like, "Sister Sin, it's it's a it's a good day to see you out out in the market. Um, do do you need anything? Do you need anything at all?" I think I kind of wave you, and I you know you know wave you back, and I you know it it kind of push you down, and not push you down, but kind of point in the direction of you know take peace, sit down, be patient, and I think I. You know, I make you kind of sit there as I finish my food. And then I'm like, you need, um, you need a haircut. You need, you know, I, I know someone who will mm, tailor you. And I think I'm going to take you towards a stall where they will make you look more um, native. Oh, okay. I, 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 I kind of, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I, I like the vibe of my hair, you know, a little bit, but uh, you know, what, whatever you say, sister sin, I understand, you know, n- um, night brothers, they serve the night sisters and I am a night brother, whatever you say, let's go. Yeah. You know what? Who needs it? Um, so I think I take you to one of the locals who's used to doing like a barber kind of job um, for others around here. Uh, And I'm like, what is your purpose here, Bayo? Well, I'm here to get my hair cut, I think. Or you mean like here, like big picture here or here, Dathomir? There's a lot of answers to hear, I guess. Um, I think I'm here to get my hair cut. I am here to find my way, and I am here to be a night brother, I think. Yeah. All right. Um, I think that there is much to learn about being a night brother and 
you normally Knight Brothers just are. Um, you are different. What makes you different from Knight Brothers? Um, well, <laughs> you know, not all of us got to be Knight Brothers just like because. Um, so I, I guess I'm um, different because I want to be a Knight Brother and I've chosen to be a Knight Brother and I'm maybe not um, brought up to be a Knight Brother, but I, I think I could be. I could be a great Knight Brother. Sin. Sister Sin, please teach me the ways, show me the ways of the Knight Brothers and the Knight Sisters and I'll do it. You are but a child and you will um, take some learning in order to reach your potential. But if they are, if your heart is truly a night brother, you'll reach our way. Okay, okay, you got it, okay. And Bayo sits down and gets ready to have his hair cut. <laughs> and I, I think the person who's gonna cut Bayo's hair, Stephen's checking. Did did you define who it was? Mm -mm. Okay, no. so we'll we'll say it's like a an older Rodian who um, Bayo notices has a lot of like scars along the backs of her hands. Uh, her hands a little shaky too. And she'll come up and you want to trim or you want, you want, and she's, she's waving like a little vibro knife. You hear the little hump. It has a skip to it. I, uh, I look to sin. And um, sin kind of leans forward and says, like the others. And um, I think that means, you know, bald, um, like the picture in the character keeper. And, you know, maybe there's a nick here or there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the Rodian, she, her little proboscis mouth, she says, discount if I keep the hair. I get the hair, yes? All the hair. Uh, I mean, I kind of was attached to it, but not much longer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's cool. It's fine. I grow back. Night Brother doesn't need hair. Night Brother doesn't need hair. So take, take the hair. Bayo, do you jump when, when she first cuts the back of your neck uh, on one of the down swipes or you just grit your teeth? Like, what do we see when you take uh, one <clears throat> harm from getting a haircut? I, I think it's it's less that when the when the vibro blade hits the skin that's the problem, it's when her hand drifts and the blade catches a a, a horn and it just really shakes into his head. Uh, it gives him quite a headache as it she nicks gets a little cut right into the one of his his fresh horns on the side of his head. Uh, and we see we see the hair kind of falling down like rain onto the grimy floor, and when you're finally done, there are all these like maybe a half dozen cuts along your head. Good. Perfect. I think Sin steps forward and takes, you know, a large lock of that hair that's fallen and like you brushes it along where the cuts are and kind of brushes it along your face to darken your, your complexion a little bit. Um, and then leans back like she's happy with this. Yes. Oh, uh Okay. All right. All right. Okay. I guess this is what we do now. And you throw a few chits uh, the way of this Rodian, and she's she kind of hunkers down. She's wearing these robes, right? And she starts scooping all the hair into a little sack and, and giggling about it. Oh, I think, but Sin is holding that piece of hair that she used to kind of paint 
uh, Bayo's face. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whenever the Rodian kind of looks up to get that hair, she kind of holds it out and it kind of just, almost like a fuse, kind of disappears and burns out in like a green faint, you know. And this Rodian, her multifaceted eyes widen and she giggles sniffs the air it's burnt hair but evidently she's into it it's weird yeah that's that's a good first experience for Bayo. as you come out into the red mist underneath the sun here at oh wait are we in moribund or i'm sorry i think we're in high market okay oh we're in high market okay right we're we're uh... What I envision is we're like in a uh, market bazaar kind of place. Got it. Is that high market? Well, high market is, at least as it was written, and again, not necessarily written for Star Wars. It's uh, it's like taking up the third and fourth stories of a bunch of ruined buildings with bridges. So maybe there's a, a bunch of tents on a, one of the bridges that lead across <clears throat> with some bizarre stuff. So, you you know, there's a wind, there's a breeze here. Yeah. Um, and when you step out, Bayo, with your freshly shorn head, and <laughs> yeah, you, you could feel the dripping on the back of your neck. I'm not going to have you make the harm move, but I am amused by the fact of you uh, sitting at three o'clock for a little bit. So go ahead and. Go Is ahead and... I've actually, yeah, that was a question I had. When, when you take just one harm, how does that work? It's like each section of the clock is a, is a harm. Yeah, so it goes okay. three, six, nine. So you're at three o'clock. So I just dropped Perfect. the countdown from zero to three, and you'll see your heal with time. So that it'll go away right now. It just it's annoying. It burns. Mm -hmm. Sin, you and Bale, you guys are starting to move across the bridge. I guess Bale's following you. Bale, you get get a bad feeling. And Sin, up ahead, you see a pair of stormtroopers have started to walk this way on the bridge. And these are not our pristine, clean stormtroopers of the original trilogy. This is the grimy, still have the armor on as much as a symbol than anything that we saw from the Mandalorian who served the client. And, uh, and yeah, you get... Get a bad feeling, Bale. Sister, I I don't know if we should go this way. You will be my new bodyguard, and you will go with me. And I think she doesn't get in the way of the troopers, but moves as if to pass along on the road. And, yeah, you, you kind of move to another side of where they were walking. The two stormtroopers look at each other, and you, it looks like they're talking, but maybe they're using their internal mics. And then Sin feel like, like you're almost parallel to them when one swoops his head around. Hey, you, come here. And then he points right at you, Sin. What do you do? I think I just keep walking. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So uh, you you start to keep walking. Bail. Yeah. you see the stormtrooper didn't address Sin, takes a couple steps around and is bringing his little blaster rifle up. Hasn't aimed it, but he's got it. It's in ready position. It's a thing where he's he's backing up his buddy. You. I'm talking to you. Come here. Right now. What do you do? Uh, Bayo is going to Bayo's going to kind of turn and face them and he says, "What What do you need with the sister Sin? She goes where she pleases. This is our planet. You bring nothing here but bad vibes." Well, and there are people who are starting to pay attention at this point. No one has mouthed off with the stormtroopers in a while. This one says, 
We got some reports of problems with someone matching her description. Out of the way, Zabrak, or you won't like what happens. Can I? I want to. <laughs> I want to present Sister Sin in all of her glory that I know. Mm-hmm. She this got me is, a haircut. I okay. Tell me, tell me how this works. I, I, I'm sorry to break the the fiction and move, but I'd like oh, to peel back the do. disguise. When you're present present with a wolf of the maelstrom, you can roll plus weird to reveal them to the people. Her, basically, my my goal here is I know that Sister Sin is a wolf of the maelstrom. I've seen it. I want to scare these stormtroopers with her presence by revealing it. Interesting. So I see here that you've written down under their disguises, they look like people, but they have empty holes for eyes and are dripping gore. That is what you see about sin? Yes. Okay. And you want to reveal that to these two stormtroopers i do present with a wolf in the maelstrom yeah you can choose to roll weird on a 10 plus everyone here sees them clearly albeit for a moment before yes. their disguise reasserts themselves that sounds perfectly fine to me <laughs> and, and not at all a problematic uh sudden change to things it is delightful please move forward with this all right so I'm rolling 2d6 plus one. Here we go. <laughs> and I get a seven, which as we nice. know is a, is a successful roll, of, of course. <laughs> and I, I think what that will do is buy you a moment as you can't see the expressions on their faces because they are wearing helmets and masks. But you hear that's right behold the glory of the night sister we are going now sister and i think if uh if bayo's going to escort me i'm gonna you know continue walking oh sin you're not sure what bayo just did but you got you got a weird There was a moment where nothing physically changed, but you felt the the closest thing I can think to is as if you were in a shower and someone ripped back the shower curtain. Oh, yeah. Um, we will talk about what just happened in a moment, but first, the other worlders must be dealt with dealt with um, are they coming after us right now uh they're talking to each other in yeah. their internal comm units uh and looking at each other one of them hasn't looked back at you once one of them hasn't stopped looking at you sin mm-hmm. like he actually reaches up and you think he's adjusting something on his helmet and i we're just going to keep walking until okay. they make an aggressive. If they make an aggressive move or something like that, then I'll do something. But otherwise, um, we're just going to walk away, and I want to know what Bayo just did. Okay. So yeah. we're about to cut away from that scene, but the other thing that you notice as soon as you start to walk away is that there is a, there's a human mother, our first human, uh, who isn't in a Stormtrooper uni- uniform. There's a human mother, and she pulls her kid closer to her breast and kind of shies away from you. Like she's seen something horrific in you. No one reacts to you like that normally. Like some people, they, they seem wary, but no one has ever seemed horrified by your presence. So the last second we see, how does Sin, what do we see her like reaction to someone 
being terrified of you as if you're some kind of rancor or monster. So actually, I'm going to use a slightly different word. I think, so Sin walks along with a certain amount, oh, like haughty. Like mm -hmm. she yeah. not only belongs here, but owns this. Yeah. And the stormtroopers, the troopers, whenever they interrupted her, were like a distraction, a fly or something like that. But as she's walking away, and she sees not the fear from the mother and child, but maybe a little bit of horrified, like almost disgust. That's whenever she, that haughtiness kind of falters and she, maybe there's a little hitch in the step. And then, it, you know, the, that practiced image comes back up and she's haughty again and kind of walks off. Um, quickly, I think into the crowd along with Bayo so that there won't be, you know, surely the troopers won't follow us in here. Okay. So that's your intent is you'd like to get out of here before there are any further problem problems, but, but not look like you're running away. Right. Oh, absolutely. Because you're too yeah. hot. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah. Let's cut to Yuka. And I'm sorry. I've had you sitting there for a while, Ferret. I apologize. Uh, poor spotlight management on my part. Where is Yuka staying in the Fallen City right now? I think uh, much like uh, Crix, she's in a Chiaroscuro and uh, sells her services at the high market. Interesting. Cool. And what services uh, would she be selling? Violence. Done well. Violence done well. Awesome. That is. That makes sense. She also gardens, but there is a lot less call for that. There is. I think your. How does Yuka sell her services? She walks, she's an Athorian with a plethora of weapons. That is very odd. People mm -hmm. tend to either have questions, uh, general questions like, do you know how to use that? Then when she like, you know, shoots a glass bottle with a blaster at several paces, the questions are, can you use that against X? Usually. All right. So you've, yeah, I think you are in the market when, mm. there's a Clatoonian female who approaches you. And the, look on her face is nervous uh, and, and she comes up and she says you are you're Yuka yes yes you do violence very well I must ask and I must say and yes for the right amount of credits You seem nervous. Is this where you want to talk about this? No. No, I do not. Follow me. And she will uh, lead this person to a, uh, a noisy cantina, let's say. Cool. I like that. So you lead her to a noisy cantina and we'll say it's the Rancor Pit, because we've already got that. Uh, the Rancor Pit's a bar located on the edge of the city, battered by the way. So we'll, maybe we'll like lift and drop it to where it's closer to where you are in a high market. So we'll just say that it's located on in a high market. We'll say edge of high markets. There we go. And just so we have a little bit of uh, tie-in, Ravita is dancing here and happens to be close enough to potentially overhear this but but you know we'll see 
and the Clatoonian, she seems much more relaxed now that you gave her the opportunity to talk. She says, my name is Milo and I need you to kill Rex. It would help if I knew who Rex was and why you wanted them dead. I will pay more with no questions asked. How much were you originally going to offer? Uh, I, I have one barter. I, I think uh, Yuka like, uh, places the Omni tool that she has on uh, the table. One barter would buy you, like, your offer would buy you my services fixing your house. Do you want a plumber or do you want someone to help you? Are you trying to sway her to get more money? Uh, I think so. it might be. Or Are you trying just... to read her? Yeah, I think I'm more trying to read her. Like, she's trying to get me to kill someone for, like, a pittance. This is either she's desperate or thinks I'm stupid. Yeah, so let's have you read her. Roll and plus that's, sharp. That is a six. Okay, go ahead and uh, and mark sharp. And she says... If you, if you kill him, I can pay so much more. And then you see four Clatoonians step into the cantina. And she peers over and oh, Karen asked. And she starts to try to duck down behind a, a table and the Clatoonians. There's one behind the three. And he, gestures and they start to fan out like they're moving around would you say i'm in a situation now you seem to be in a situation indeed because i have a do? move that uh activates do, do you yeah that sounds like a good thing to have what is this move that you have that I dangerous have? presence when you're in a situation roll plus aggro and i get options based on how well i do all right why don't you roll plus aggro then gods i am not doing well that is a five <laughs> So go ahead and mark aggro. Mark that, that stat. Oof. This and let's a, see, is there a miscondition written in I here? I think so. I think I am. Uh, let me, if you uh, have enemies here, they immediately, immediately move, move against, against you. Do you? So let me ask, because it seems like the Clatoonians might potentially be an enemy but does yuka have do you have in your head cannon any defined enemies the hut cartel oh the hut cartel that's true they don't like you at all yeah yeah she's killed several huts awesome so yuka you you step forward a little bit using the dangerous presence you got to be known right you got to be a dangerous presence and one of the Clatoonians, and remember, Clatoonians are like dog faced men. They're like anthropomorphic dog people. And I love that I now know that in my headcanon. So I think that there's one that has like a bit of a terrier look, like he's got that scruffy, you know, kind of like this. I guess I look like a terrier now. I've just now decided that this terrible beard it looks terrier esque. But he, he, he looks at you and he, he just kind of shrinks back. Uh, as he sees your just whole Eunice. Uh, but then from behind you, you hear a robotic voice. Uh, if you want to take a look on the NPCs and places, down on row 12, there is uh, E631. And that droid says, Yuka, the blue cultivator. Target acquired. And 
brings his arm up and the hand kind of pops back. Poof, you can see this little barrel pop out and it starts to fire at you. Uh, you take two harm. Oh, good thing I have my armor. That absorbs it. You do? You take no harm whatsoever? So go ahead and roll plus zero. You're rolling okay. the harm. Now I'm going to get high when I shouldn't. What if I think? Or I think that's... I think, think they changed low. so you think want to get Think low numbers. High. Oh, oh is, it, is it different? Let's see. Let's look at our harm move. Uh, let's see. On a mid... So you actually want to roll high on this that's, one. That makes sense because I just rolled low. Nice. Nice. Okay. Uh, so, on a miss, the MC chooses when you're out of action, unconscious, trapped, incoherent, or panicked. It's worse than a scene, taking an additional one harm. Uh, it's our opening scene, and, and knocking you out seems less interesting than it just hurt a lot. Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and give you one harm. So, the armor would have eaten it up, but maybe it catches you at a spot near your neck, uh, and it it hurts. Now, do you have a translator or do you just speak raw authorian and, and motherfuckers got to deal with it oh no she has a translator cool i think your translator's maybe a little glitchy and you take one arm gotcha uh e361 mm, adjusting and i think uh at that point she just reaches behind herself pulls out this uh tiny little uh, stick presses a button it extends this huge gravity hammer uh, head just explodes out uh, <laughs> yeah and then uh, she presses the button and like the small like the gravity thing starts going off where like you know one end is now much heavier than the other and she begins she goes for the droid awesome there's screaming the music stops people are taking cover the clatoonian who is coming up on you the terrier face guy was like oh and he starts running the other way because he thinks you're gonna grab hammer him uh and let's see you it seems as if you want to do some violence on someone so yeah well let's see if my rolls hold steady I think you're doing battle. When you attack someone while under fire, be prepared to exchange harm and roll plus hard. Oh, there we go. That's a 10. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. So on a 10 plus, choose whether to attack them with a 10 plus and act under fire with a 7 nine to 9 or vice versa. So I don't, this is the one piece of, uh, of, of burned over current rule set that I don't love. But you basically, when you're doing battle, you have to kind of engage two different moves. It's probably better if we look at row uh, E9. So when you attack someone, roll plus hard. Uh, or you're doing battle. So attack someone while under fire. Be prepared to exchange harm mm -hmm. uh, on a, and, and roll hard. On a 10 plus, choose whether to attack them with a 10 plus and act under fire with 7 to 9. Or act under fire with a 10 plus and attack them with a seven to nine. Does that make sense or vice versa? So yeah, it makes sense. It's okay. a bit weird, but I think I will. Don't love it, but. I will attack with the 10 and have a seven to nine to act under fire. Okay, so when you attack with a 10 plus, you choose two of the following against your enemy. It's the terrible harm, seize hold of something, get them out of your way, impress, frighten, or dismay them, or pin them down. I am going to uh, pin them down. And I, uh, I think uh, I seize uh, his weapons or like the, its uh, current weapon. I think the grab hammer just destroys its arm. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds, that sounds amazing. So you like come around with a grab hammer, which uh, sounds a little bit like, here, let me do it again. There, does it sound, does it sound good and grab hammery? All right, uh, and then the act under fire. So you did a 10 plus on act, um, attack someone and seven to nine on act under fire, flinch, hesitate, or stall, might set for full harm, but the MC can offer you a hard bargain, unfortunate choice. So I think what happens is before you destroy that weapon, he was adjusting, he ticked it up a notch from two harm to three harm, uh, and he hits you. So on a seven to nine, it's three harm coming your way. Uh, before you destroy the weapon and effectively immobilize E361, which means that you will take one more harm and you get to roll the harm move again. Yay. And this is a minus one this time, right? Yes, you are rolling minus one. 2d6 minus one. And there's a two. There we All go. Right. 
that is uh that is the thing so i think here's what happens he adjusted it to a th- to three harm uh but there was also he had had a stunner to it and so that's how i'll justify that that miss is that you are stunned and you end up falling to the floor in this uh, cantina, the Rancor Pit, with a Clatoonian and a pretty much ruined assassin droid nearby. And I think with that, we will go ahead and take our mid-game break. All right, so we leave Yuka lying on Rancor Pit floor. And we cut back to Crix. And I think Crix at this point, you've gotten those five kids in. They've eaten the melon. Some time has passed. They seem much more amiable, uh, more welcoming, trusting. All of them have that tattoo, though. And, uh, and yeah, so what are you If doing? time has passed. Yeah. I'd quite like to have Ravida appear. Oh, I was either going to have, I was actually going to have Ravida call, but I think appear is even better. Um, uh, and, and she's clearly a bit, you know, kind of distressed because what she saw happen up there in, mm-hmm. in the high market is not, you know, it's, it's a relatively peaceful place up there. Down here can get a bit violent. Um, and and she describes this this um, shootout in the club where she was dancing. She um, this. and and describes this Ethorian with with this enormous hammer. It made this low hum. I've never seen anything like it. And 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 Crix says, "Let me describe this Ethorian for you." Um, and and Crix, who has, I think we we had a, uh, had established, has fought alongside Yuka. Oh, that's true. Um, describes Yuka to a T. And and Ravida says, yes. Uh, and 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 you know, did a really big blaster, yeah. Um, and and a, and a crossbow. Maybe? Shit. What has she done now? Where did the last see her? Where, what, what, did they take her away? What happened? Uh, the, the droid, I think, is done for, but those Clatoonians, they drug her away. Damn it. It's, it's Rex and his guys. Oh, Rex. Yeah. Oh shit. Um. Oh shit. Okay. Okay. Um. You stay here. Watch the kids. We have kids now. And the Relax, kids, kids. This is Ravida. She's great fun. Teach him to dance or something. Um. But keep them safe, okay? Uh, Var, you stay here and you keep Ravida sh- safe. Um, what? No, you're going into danger and you're leaving me behind. That's stupid. They're in greater danger than I am. You know that. Don't be, you know, jeez. Um, and I suppose I want to go and find Rex. You do, huh? I mean, that seems like a thing you could try. That sounds that sounds fine to me. Uh, I'm just there isn't there isn't a kind of hit the Duracrete here, is there? There's there isn't. So let's take a look at our moves and see if there is a move we can do. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, open your brain is an excellent way to learn such a thing. Uh, if you want to cruise a market. You oh, can... oh, I've just had a thought. Yes. Surely I bump into Grim, who will go among my enemies and return. Oh, 
that sounds that sounds fun let's let's use that so do you have a when i have my children do a thing move it, it just seems to give me some fictional positioning is the way i'm reading oh it. i love it i love it i was just wondering if we were engaging a move or if that's just okay oh man that inheritor i really want to see that one. i mean maybe when it comes to breaking in i have to try something challenging but all I, all I want Grim to do is to tell me where I can find Rex. That sounds good. Because Grim puts himself about. He does. I want to explore. I think Rex. Yeah, I don't think he's in Morbin. Uh I think that he. He would not be in Soul Tree. I think he, he's got he and his pack. I'm leaning all the way into the dog stuff, guys. He and his pack, uh, they have they hang around the well because there's lots of water. Enormous yeah. circular pit ring with duracrete ledges. And that, that's Grim, the place place where where that that freaky woman keeps preaching, isn't it? It unfortunately is. Yeah, Grim says, "Yeah, the stupid nice sister." Yeah, I mean, I don't know why there still are Mike sisters. What's that all about? I thought okay. they were all dead. The Duke well, look, Grim, all. you know, I appreciate it. Just, um, just like the Jedi, they just, oh, they're all dead. It's the last one. Then another one shows up or another one shows up. Um, Get your story Grim, straight. Uh, just, just um, you know, you move in and out of, um, you know, you're well known to lots of people. I know that. Um, I just need to know if there's an Ithorian in there with Rex and the guys. Yeah. Yeah, there is. Um, okay. Um, then I think that it's just as well I brought a bag full of melons, isn't it? Well, I don't think they're going to trade melons for this Thorian. Um, well, it'll get me through the door. Rex is not unreasonable. He's a Batuvian. It's their whole deal. Look, look, Grim, I know you have a thing about, you know, certain species, but you've got to st stop characterizing no, them all. It's about certain people and all Clatoonians I've ever met. Okay, just, just, just relax. Okay, just, just. If I'm not out in ten minutes, pay to relax. You're the one who relaxes. I make it to where you can relax. Well, look, just, just. Um, if I'm not out in, you you're know, going in by yourself. Yeah, because this isn't about threatening. That's true. Okay, if I show up, they're gonna that we strapped. Um, but if I'm not, if I, if I'm not out in thirty minutes. Give our call, down. okay? No, just 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 give our call and 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 you know check it out, okay? Thirty minutes. Um, and I think I'd like to try something challenging to to get eyes on what's going on in here without being seen. Does that seem? That seems appropriate. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I will roll 2d6 plus 2. That's aggro. Oh, hang on. Just let me check if I've got to move. No, that's okay. Uh, that's 6, 7, 8. Nice. I like 6, 7, 8. You can do it. Uh, but you have to ask me what, what it'll cost you and decide for yourself if you want to go through with it. What's it going to cost me, MC? I think what you're going to have to do, melons aren't enough. What you're going to have to do is bribe the pair of Clatoonians that Rex is milling around outside. Uh, and I think it's going to knock your barter down from, not forever, but for the rest of this session and maybe into the next until you come into a score to get you back whole. You'll lose one barter. 
seems fair. Okay. So I leave them with some melons. Oh, and <laughs> yeah, and uh, and go in. Um, uh, and I want to get eyes on, really, just to get a flavour of what I'm seeing here. So I'm hoping that sets me up for a uh, reader situation. Yeah, it will. But I'm going to cut to Yuka. Yuka, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking at Thorian. I imagine that they've got nostrils somewhere around their mouth. Oh, oh, yeah, you're right. You're right on the sides. So... <laughs> Like we we cut and, we, and Yuka hasn't woken up yet, and there's one Clotudian with Rex behind because, you know, that's the smart way. Uh, so this this like younger Clotudian is wave smelling salts in front of your mouth, and then Rex is barks a little bit. You idiot! Around the side, oh, waves the smelling salt around one of the sides of your two mouths, and you start awake your head aches a little bit uh like a lot of lactic acid like you're sore from whatever's happened and you see that they haven't chained you up but there's rex who runs a pack rex has got a guy who's got a, a blaster rifle pretty much on you and your stuff's all standing up against a corner and there's a younger like younger is a pup right like he's teens for a clatoonian uh but you can tell that he's got that just that he would be wagging he don't have tails but if he had one he'd be, he'd be wagging it in excitement to get to do this but he, he scampers back a little bit and you got you got your nose and a lot of trouble, Rex says. I have. Have I? That seems Sorry. interesting. Uh, it seems like someone came to me wanting you dead. I didn't make a decision about it. And Ooh, now here I you'll, am. You'll tell the rest of the pack this. My sister wanted to murder me. You'll tell the pack this? Yeah? I don't know if it was your sister, but if, if you can bring me the... I remember her face. If you bring her forward and it's the same Kleptunian, yeah, I'll say it's, uh, it's her. I mean, I am curious to why she wants you dead. She wants to be a top dog. She thinks she takes me out. She gets the pack and all the holdings. She wait, wait. The alpha. Milo's an idiot. Wait, wait. She wants to run a gang. That the woman who couldn't even, you know what she offered me to kill you? And like she like, I think like the uh, like the translator breaks, like it comes out in authorian. Like it's like it, and like I assume like he actually understands authority for some reason. Sure, like it, it's like it like it comes out like the word is just like translates like an insulting low number. And the Clotunians look at each other for a moment for a beat, and then they just break out in like this barking laughter. <laughs> I told you she's an idiot. She's an idiot. Now, you know, our dad won't mind when I kill him. So, kill her. So, yeah. Yeah, you finger her. You're out. You get all your stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we we've got a deal. That's easy. Cool. So, Cricks, you step in. After having bribed your way to get into the place. I just yeah. thought of something else that's a bit more interesting. Oh, yeah. So I've got past the guards outside. And then when we cut back to Cricks, um, we, we've got a view. We, we're looking over his shoulder at what at, at, at the scene around Yuka. Mm -hmm. and, and, and he turns around and it's like he's talking. So what do you think? Yeah. What about you? Because I've got a move called Inheritors, which, which allows me to commune with, with previous generations. Mm -hmm. uh, whether that is simply a a slight a, emotional well-being issue on my my part um or whether that's real we don't know um one of your favorite taught you patience perspective and careful thought when you take time to reflect it's as though you can sit with generations of your forebears in council though of course they've got they're gone 
treat them as advisors and your reflection is insight. And insight allows me to say to you, MC, um, uh, what's the best course here? Am I, am I likely to be able to bluff my way out of this? Mm. What do you want to accomplish? I want to extract Yuka from this without anybody else getting hurt. Ah, these are, this pack is violent. Someone will get hurt. Really? You think that? I do. What, you too? Mm. Oh, There's a point. Even if you extract without hurting anyone, then the pack leader will hurt someone as punishment. Okay. So uh, the approach I'm going to take then is because I get plus one if I pursue that course. And it seems to me then that uh, I need to get Yuka out of here. But the chances are I'm not going to be able to just bluff it. So I'm ready to take action. So if I end up taking action, I, 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 that's where I get the plus one, I guess. Yeah. But I'm going to start with... Uh, Hi, Rex. Um, could we talk about that Ithorian and these melons? Go get Milo, he says to one of one of his guys. He, he t says to the young one, the puppy, like grabs him by his ear and kind of pulls it off. Go get Milo, shoves him off. And, because... Uh, I don't know if you know who you've got there. Oh my God. A Thorian who's going to help me take care of my problematic sister. Yeah. 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 But, but, but Rex, not just any a Thorian. This a Thorian. Tell you some princess. No, some this a Thorian around. is big in with the huts. Okay. You mess with this Athorian, you're messing with the huts. I heard this had gone off and I simply wanted to come in. I know this Athorian. I know that you are looking at a world of pain. Right. And so right. either you let that Athorian walk out of here with me now, or you are going to get badly hurt. I don't think you're swaying him. I really I'm feel confronting. like you're confronting him. So when you confront, intimidate, threaten, stand off or bluff someone, roll plus aggro. So I will roll plus two. Oh, look at you. You are so good at that. Um, and that gets a whole five. Nice. Nice. He says, first, I'm going to take your melons. They're mine. Those melons, my melons. Just so we're clear. Second, part B. There is an assassin droid working on a bounty from the Hut Cartel trying to take your Thorian princess out. Kill bounty. No alive, just dead. So you're wrong on that. Um, would it be fair to say that Crix feels he's in a little bit of a corner here? You are definitely in a corner. And okay, I well, I have, have a move, move for that. Trigger. Yes, you do. I love this one. Um, Against the odds. To, yeah, when you're back you're Phil Collins corner. singing in the background. Um, I will roll plus aggro because I feel very much in a corner. Yeah. You should. Holy mother of God, that's a five plus two gets me to seven. On seven to nine, the MC chooses one for me. Okay. So the options are you have an unexpected ally, you have a desperate opportunity, you have a sudden realization, you find reserves of speed, strength, or endurance, you have a piece of amazing luck. Yeah, I think I think we're going to cut away from the scene. <laughs> <laughs> 
Sin and Bale, the two of you have moved off the bridge and away from those two stormtroopers. Sin, where are you leading your new acolyte or servitor? Or what, what? I don't know what. What is it? Yeah, <clears throat> I want to get. Uh, I think I take uh, Bale off to the side, and I pull him back in, and I say, uh, um, I pull him back. So, like, I think there's a big, like, wall of uh not duracrete but a natural wall like the clay that's actually here the stone <clears throat> and i back up against that and i sit down and i gesture for bayo to sit in front of me this place and, that sin has pulled you bayo feels ancient and sacred there are these circles that are burned in to the clay behind where she sits and it's like they're pointing towards her. Bayo, Bayo sits, Bayo kneel. Bayo uh, overly flourishes the kneel. Yes, Sister Sin. Oh, and I think she leans forward and she puts both hands on either side of your face and says, back there, what did you do? What did you do with the off-world off-worlders. I, um, you know, I just, I gave them what they were putting out into the universe, bad vibes. And, uh, you know, I just, <clears throat> I just showed them who we are, who you are. I'm going to open my brain. Okay. Yeah. That sounds great. And the way the dice roller is rolling so hot, it's going to work out wonderfully for everyone. <laughs> and specifically what I'm looking for is exactly what kind of power Bayo has. Like, what did he do? What was this? You know, I'm looking for that kind of thing. So cool. let me roll. And, and Cody, just be prepared. Like, I think you will be the leader in this. Like, this is your, mm -hmm. this is your things. So you'll be the leader in this answer. Okay. So let me roll. That's a four. Um, plus my weird is a three, I think. So I think Holy that gets me to a cats. seven. Holy cats. I thought this was going to be terrible. Instead, it's going to be worse. This is awesome. Yeah. So I think what that means is I'm just along for the ride. Uh, I don't get any real answers. Yeah. Seven to nine. Along for the ride. Yeah. And if the MC has any questions for you, you have to answer them. That's, that's, yeah. right that. that's always good. So what does it look like when Sin opens her brain? What does Bayo see when you do this for the first time? Do you get the like green, glowing green eye thing that we see from the Clone Wars with the Night Sisters? No, I don't think so. I think okay. that what we see is, um, I think Bayo sees the same thing that I do. Like it's almost as if we're traveling through some of uh his memories um i think outwardly other people just see the two of us kind of praying and there might be some dark smoke like that surround us it's that mist that's kind of around here and maybe it swirls a little bit close and looks a little bit spooky so people might skirt around us but for the two of us i think it's sort of like we're involved in like a memory walk kind of thing Bale, tell us a little, what does a wolf of the maelstrom, what is it that he has done? The wolves of the maelstrom, the, 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 I almost, the, the, the presence on Dathomir, the, the wolves of Dathomir, it, it's, they're there. Everyone can see them. They just have to have the fortitude and the, the calm to pause and look at them. And Bayo came to this planet seeking something, and he immediately found it in these wolves. And for him to show anyone else their presence, all it is is it's, it's just him speaking a word in, in, into, into reality to call their attention. Yes, 
that thing you're hiding, that thing that is at the corner of your eyes that you, you look away from and avert your attention to something more pleasant, it is there. And if you look directly at it, you'll see it. Everyone can see it. They just need to look at it. Um, and, and at least that's Veo's experience. It, it comes so naturally for him to spot these things. Uh, it feels overwhelming at times. And he just shared that overwhelming, uncomfortable feeling that he has with those troopers. And yet you're seeking this out. I'm sorry. It's, it's like you're opening your brain sin, but I'm asking some Bayo questions. Bayo's seeking this out, knowing sin is a wolf of maelstrom. Bayo is seeking out his, his, what he believes to be his, his roots, his culture, his history. Okay. He didn't know what he would find. And he's uncomfortable by what he's finding, but he still believes that he needs to find it, whatever it is. He, 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 he thinks that there's value to be had in him, you know, finding out the peoples that his, his uh, ancestors left behind. Um, and he's gotten here and he's gotten scared and perhaps there's no real way to get out of it. So he's committed to it now. Brave. I think you're along for, for the ride for that sin. You learn Bayo is here to understand a past you can't really explain well for him. But that he has some kind of power that over time could draw out the lies from the truth of what you tell him. So you have best to be careful. Um... And I think with that, uh, you know, looking into the maelstrom, I think that there's part of sin that you see as well, Veo. And I think part of that is the, uh, you see her talking to uh, like the outline of green ghosts at some point, and then it shifts. And I think you see a lot of violence. Like, I think you see stormtroopers coming in and attacking that village in the mountains and lots of death. And it's just kind of a blur and it's very confusing. And I think whenever all this breaks, Sin leans back and says, there is power in you and you were wise to have sought me out. Cool, uh, Sister Sin, I thought so too. I um, thought you were wise, I mean, and you're powerful. Uh, and do you need anything? Should I get something? Are you cool? Are we cool? I'm sorry if what I did with those troopers was bad. I sh maybe I should no. have asked first, but no, it's good to show your power to those who don't understand it. It puts the world in the right place. Um, come, let's go. And I think we're gonna head back. And I think <clears throat> so. Uh, Bayo, where have you been staying? Uh, Bayo, Bayo's definitely been staying. I think he's been staying near the open market community, the mercantile community, the Chiascaro. I think he's just kind of been bunking down and going out kind of like on walkabouts uh, whenever he can. So I don't think he has like a, a stable place. I, I didn't take the bolt hole move, for instance. Um, so I th think he's just kind of like, and, he, and he's very giving with what he has. So people kind of give him a bunk readily um, when he said, when, when he brings back something to eat. Um, so I didn't take the bolt hole move either, but I'm going to narratively just say, okay. So I think that Sin has a place that she is in the underground area, the moorbound. And um, I think she's going to take you, you know, tell you, gather your things and take you down into that area. And we will um, find you a place nearby so that you can better commune with Sin. Yeah. Well, I don't have much, so that'll be easy. Yeah. Interesting. So you come to this determination 
that now the two of you will live near each other. You don't fight it, Baal. It seems like the destiny is unfolding before you. A wolf is showing you the way. But there are these stormtroopers who are looking for you now. Sin, what do you do about that? Getting from high market out of here safe. Um, so I'm going to act as if there is no problem until the stormtroopers make a problem. Um, so basically, I think I'm going to escort Bayo back to get his stuff. Um, and, you know, I'm going to act like I own the place. And if there's any problems that come up, then we'll deal with it. All right. So the two of you head out of high market and Rich now will go glance at Kiaroscuro and we'll get a, a vibe for, for that one. Kiaroscuro, open mercantile community under fallen overpasses. So you're going to be traveling from this like third, fourth story and walking out and I imagine overpasses. Do you imagine it's like in the downtown of this fallen city? Like where a bunch of main veins of uh Duracrete streets overlapped each other or do you imagine this on one of the outskirts uh i think cody your character was living in chiaroscuro so we'll let you in my mind i think it's probably closer to the outskirts than it is downtown i think in my mind i'm imagining these overpasses that they're they're not so much tumble down as like being reclaimed by the wilds like you know there's a a, a dust storm and now a road is completely covered and it doesn't exist anymore um that's kind of how i think of it i like it i like that a lot the two of you are walking the sun is shining down on you it's not baking it's, we're, we're not tattooing but as the two of you are traveling towards chiaroscuro you hear overhead sound of the tie fire pair of them just cruising and sin as you followed by Bayo, make your way to Kiaroscuro you see coming up from behind you is one of those I, I use this way too much but I'm, I'm going to do it those APCs like the stormtrooper carriers is just skimming along. It's coming from the area within the downtown, not far from High Market, where it's the the stormtroopers reside. They don't really have an official, like nice barracks or anything along those lines. But they they kip near High Market, and they have a pretty you know, in good shape. APC carrier and it's headed your way. What do you do? So I think I, uh, whenever we hear the uh, flights overhead, they those are the telltale signs of a TIE fighter, correct? Oh, absolutely. And I turn to uh, Bayo and I say, the off-worlders have come to our planet and taken of it and hurt it. And we must bide our time for they will be gone soon. They will be gone eventually. And those that remain will rebuild. And I think I, at that point, I kind of run my hand along some of this granite artwork that, <clears throat> that you described earlier with like weird symbols and stuff like that. And I think as we see that APC, um, it's whenever, you know, if there's no one else on the, you know, if there's no one else around here to watch, I think I will take us to kind of skirt around it, like hide, mm -hmm. um, but not, you know, I'm not necessarily going to directly confront it. Um, that seems like a smart choice. Yeah. What would that, uh, do you want to roll for that? Yeah, I think I'd like to see you Try something challenging. Yeah. You gotta move quick. 
uh, and you need to get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. So let me roll that real quick. Now, let's not forget that there is a help rule. Right. So, uh, Bayo, you, you intuit what she's doing and could potentially help. But we can let the dice hit the table first. So let's see what this looks like. Um, that is a total of six. Minus two is four. Oof. Okay, that is a failure. How yeah. can I help in this situation? <laughs> um, can you help? Now, the good news is that if Bayo can help, ah. you can bump it up a level. So it goes from a fail to a mixed success. So okay. you, Sin, get to tell Bayo how he can help. Um, I think that you recognize that Sin is treating you sort of like a bodyguard. Um, and you also know, know more about these off-worlders and their methods. So I think that you know, uh, you might be able to know better about how to evade um, their tactics. Okay, yeah, I like that. So is going to attempt to kind of guide Sin. No, 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 not, not that way. We should go this way. And then lead her around a different, a different avenue. Um, so I'm rolling help. It's going to be 2d6 plus 1 plus my history. Mm-hmm. Right. And here we go. Uh oh. Nope. I did the wrong. I did a bad. Here, let me just go up there and hit enter. There we go. I got a seven. So that does, I believe, if it's a hit uh, on any hit, your help bumps their roll up from a miss to a seven to nine hit or from a seven to nine to ten. Uh, on a ten plus, I would have gotten an additional history, but that is okay. Sin. On a seven to nine, which is what you now have on trying something challenging, you can do it, but IVMC will tell you what it will cost you, and you get to decide for yourself if you want to go through with it. Yeah. You can get away from these troopers who are probably coming after you. Those TIE fighters are probably scouting in the area trying to find you. SAPC is full of stormtroopers. We're probably coming for you. And you can get away from this. You can duck away. They will pass by. Joe looks scared to Bayo. Bayo relying on his help. You'll look like you needed his help. So that's my choice is to look scared and get away or don't and not get away. I think I'd rather not look scared. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Bayo tries to give you some advice. You tell him, oh, do this and this. And you realize, oh, uh, this looks like I'm cowering. And the APC stops and then starts to turn right it's got this decent turn ratio but it can't do it while it's going forward and over the loudspeakers from this uh pretty pretty sizable device uh vehicle all right night sister come quietly we don't want to have to blast you What do you do? I think, you know, because I want to, you know, I specifically don't want to look weak in front of Bayo. Um, I'm going to manifest the Maelstrom uh-huh. and do physical <laughs> damage in this area. Uh-huh. And I'm not sure exactly how that works, but let's see what it looks like. Okay. So you want to manifest the Maelstrom. You have... Uh... The Maelstrom Manifest. You can unleash the world's psychic Maelstrom as the destructive physical force environ of the equals your psi. What is your psi rating? A it two. is two. Okay, so you're doing two harm. It cannot be brought to bear on a specific target. Yeah, that, that translates to eight harm. 
Ooh. Okay. Because because the environ is a lot to a whole area. So how does Sin imagine the maelstrom of the force, the abilities that are inherent in her as a night sister? Because you've just brought this force. This could be a simple maelstrom equals hurricane. It could be a monster of some kind that you've brought to your beck and call, but you have just killed all of the stormtroopers in that APC and destroyed it. Um, so I think what that looks like is she turns and I think she puts out her hands with a you know an alien kind of gesture, finger waggling. <clears throat> and we see cracks appear along the alleyway in the rock and in the uh, rock that's really too hard um, to normally crack. And we see that this crack comes forward and uh, surrounds the entire area. And we see the building shake and we see some debris start to uh, crumble. We see the APC actually starts to shake a little bit. It's it's sort of like it's in the middle of an earthquake, you know. It's sh- you know, it's moving around, and I think over the P- over the PA we hear over the intercom we hear you know a couple of shouts about like you know, uh, you know what is that, and then some uh you know get us out of here, and then I think we see this large portion of the building come you know the the a nearby building come down and hit the APC. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So it almost looks uh, like just, oh, a thing fell on the APC. But you know, Bale, you know what Sin just did to the off-worlders that she says shouldn't be here. The red dust is kicked out for many, many meters. You hear the sounds of the dying. And then it is quiet. Bail. You've just seen something that ah, the Night Sisters, their power manifest. It's a miracle. What do you do? Bayo, as he's hearing the kind of dying screams <laughs> or cries or gurgles, uh, he pulls his hunting knife and goes to any troopers he finds that are still struggling to make their journey. And hearing them die out before he finds any of them, he puts the blade away, kind of gets his resolve back and, and turns back to to Sister Sin, and he, he says, Sister, that was a, a great power. That that was awesome. Can I learn it? Can you teach it? Is that is that our heritage? Is that our culture, our belief? To, to do that. Um, and Sin kind of turns, and they start to continue on their way. And she says... Um, that is the way the spirits talk through me. Your way may be different, but we shall walk it together. And I shall show you as far as I can where your path for the spirits lay. Whatever you say, sister, I, I, I trust you. I, you know best. That seems like a great cut, cut like in scene to me. We just the camera watches the two of you continue on to Kiaroscuro, where Sin will show Bea where he must stay, and we come back to the Platoonian pack of Rex. The move against the odds had been triggered by Crix, and Mm, I'm so excited by that crazy amount of environment. I, I haven't made my choice, but I think what we have 
here is you have a sudden realization as Rex, Rex told you, yeah, not, not a hug cartel. He says, but uh, you could hear the key to me taking care of Milo, my fool sister. So you want her out of here, that's fine. She just needs to tell the truth about what she knows. And both the two of you can go and you can, can deal with whatever hot cartel mess she has. I don't care. So you have a seat, Crick's Aaron. Um, I lean on my shovel, and then I try to take his head off with it. <laughs> awesome! <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Okay, I think you're attacking someone. I think I'm doing battle. After? I think he didn't expect this, so you are just straight up attacking. Him. Oh, fine, I'll take that. You got a uh, desperate opportunity here, and okay, uh, take um, advantage. Of it. Uh, I, uh, I and I've got the plus one because my my ancient advisors told me this was going to go to shit. Mm -hmm. They did. So I'm ready to rock. So um, attack someone would be hard. Oh dear, yeah, that's not a good sign. So that's minus one plus the one from the advisors gets me yes, flat. Yes, flat roll. Flat roll. Uh, for five. I would like to aid. <laughs> okay. Uh, Crix, you get to tell Yuka how you think. So, Yuka, you're not armed, right? They haven't armed you. They're not that foolish. Oh, no, though. they're not. But they've let me get up. And that was a mistake. Yeah. As it I want to tackle him at the feet so he goes face first in that shovel. Um, yeah, Is that yeah, how I mean, you... I, you want because I, I think I say no. I think Yuka says something that just distracts him. Oof. Okay. Will you say Simple that thing? That. You... Yeah, I think uh, like she uh, happened in Bounty of the Week that uh, when she'll just like let out a uh, loud Athorian roar as like the nice. translator system is busted kind of thing. So yeah, I'll roll with a finally a plus three. Finally. And I needed that. That is a nine. So I bumped that up to a seven to not a partial for uh, Cricks. That, that, nice. that works very favorably. Thank you for that. Uh, so attack someone on a seven to nine. I choose one. Yeah. Uh, on a ma okay, so I choose one. I am going to inflict terrible harm. So I'll bump the the three harm that that shovel does to a four nice uh it is three harm hand brutal yeah yeah it sure is the clatoonian rex is taken completely unaware by this, he thought he had this comp totally under his control. And you take that shovel. Imagine it's one of those like spade shovels, a sharp. And you slice across, and it doesn't. It doesn't slice all the way through. It gets caught on some part of his neck. Blood spurts out for a bit, and we cut away. From that, like we're not going to show the big gory wound. This is Star Wars, even even though it's an apocalypse world, Star Wars. But he gasps for breath and falls to his knees, and then falls over, dead. As I grab his blaster and throw it to Yuka. Yeah, the guy with the blaster rifle who's keeping eyes on you. He looks at that, and he's no longer worried about you. Like, yes, you do the two-throated roar, but this person just killed his alpha. He's got to try to do something there. Yeah. Uh, so he is bringing a weapon to bear on Crick's uh, Yuka. What do you do as you see this guy's got 
Yeah, yeah. she has the blaster thrown to her. She, I think, uh, she is probably faster with uh, aiming at it, and it's pointed at this guy's head, and the translator uh, clicks on. Mm-hmm. You have another alpha. You don't have another head. Choose your next move wisely. That's awesome. You are most definitely not attacking. You are trying to, oh, what is the confront? You're confronting him. Yep. So let's see, roll plus aggro. I think you were relative. That's a 12. Damn. He looks between you and you, and you hear deeper within the area. Some one of the Clatoonians lets out a a howl this seen this it's a mournful howl and the guy who was guarding you he he just drops the blaster rifle and he joins the mournful howl and he's not attacking Trix Aaron go put everything on the line to come save you how it lasts for a little bit you hear a few more joy voices like outside near the well join in Crix, what do you do um again yuka just stop stop what you do this is what you cause me to do now get the hell out of here follow me Wait, I have. Uh, don't you want to get paid for his death? <laughs> That's not what this is about, Yuka. That's what you never understand. And and Crix is heading out. He's yeah, done. He's will, done what he can. Yeah, she will stand by her weapons, press X like five times to pick up everything as the game continues. Uh, I think it just look down at a Rex and sigh. And it's, I think at the end, like, at the end, your life wasn't even worth anything. And just step over him and uh, follow Crix. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you you can Crix head out as Milo is led back in by that younger Clatoonian boy and you you, you know what's about to take place is Milo. It's going to be taking over Rex's pack. She's the new alpha person who would have paid you one cred, but I guess he wasn't even worth that. And I think that's where we'll bring this session to a close because we got a little bit into session stuff. Let's get that taken care of so I can let you all go. So at the end of the session, we have a few things to do. You choose... Each of you will choose which character knows you better than they used to. In its first session, so I assume everybody's going to choose that. However, if you feel like no one knows you better, you can choose a character who doesn't know you as well as they thought or any character that you want and tell them to take minus one to their HX. So if you have a character who knows you better, you plus one to their HX. Otherwise, you flip it. Uh, Let's quickly go through that. I'm going to start from the right-hand side of the character keeper. Sin, who knows you better? Definitely Bayo. Makes sense. When I add Bayo. one to the HX, oh. and uh, if that makes it four or above, is that right? So Bayo will add plus one to his HX with Sin, and okay. if that were to push to a four, then it rolls back over and you get an XP and you get a cool thing. Okay. <clears throat> Bayo, who knows you better? Definitely Sin. Sin knows my uh, my backstory and my cause, as it were. So, okay, so that will push Bayo, push you over to one. Now, let's you can think about this. It's definitely a thing we'll do in the next session. But even uh, during the session, sessions in three things will happen: reset the HX to one, mark one XP, not a tick mark, but a full XP, and then choose one of the following to ask or tell them. And they're uh, listed, I've got it in on column C4 for you. If you want to take a look at those and we'll move on from, uh, oh, and that's, um, that is Sin asking Bayo because Sin's HX rolled over. So we're clear. Crix, who knows you better? Uh, 
I don't know if this isn't just another example of Yuka and Crix's interaction from back in the day. Um, so I don't think Yuka, I, I think this is probably exactly what Yuka was expecting. I didn't expect you to come for, I didn't know you were going to actually come get me. I figured this is going to have, I'd have to get out of here by myself. Okay, then I'll take that as Yuka knows exactly what I will do for an old friend. Okay, then. Then Crix, Yuka, you will move Crix from three down to one because you rolled the four. You mark an XP, Yuka, and Yuka, you have a question you can ask Crix. And I say we save that till next session, if that's okay with everybody. Okay. Uh, and then Yuka, who knows you better? I would also say uh, Crix knows Yuka better. I think Crix finally uh, got something different because, like, you know, Normally, Yuka would have stayed behind and gotten that one cred uh, payment. You talked her out of it. Yeah, like to see that she actually got talked out of it probably is showing Surprise. some good signs, progress. Okay, that moves me from three to four, which becomes one, and yep. mark an XP. And then I'll ask a question next time. Yep. Fantastic. We got lots of questions going on. All right, now I have the next step. Uh, I'll stay with you, Yuka. Uh, judge for yourself. Are you satisfied with your place in the galaxy? Oh, hell no. Okay, you get one XP. Uh, and then, judge for yourself, does your scavenge choice still hold true? Sadly, yes. Okay, then you get another XP. So you've earned three XP. Six gets you in advance. Cricks, are you satisfied with your place in the galaxy i was i was life was very simple and very straightforward and then yuka came back into the world in which i exist uh so i am no longer satisfied with my place in the galaxy i'm afraid all right mark an xp and then does your scavenge choice still hold true um i think it does because i i think until until somebody hits my greenhouse or stops me going to the high market, I think I probably am stuck with it, yeah. Fair, fair, fair. That's another XP for you. Uh, and now, Bale. Uh, are you satisfied with your place in the galaxy? I think Bale is, actually. I think he, he's right where he wants to be. He wants to be learning from uh, a night sister, and as far as he knows, he is, so he is. All right, cool. You can take it easy until something changes. Uh, does your scavenge choice still hold true? Yes. Okay. And make an X, uh, mark an XP for that. And uh, finally, Sin, are you satisfied with your place in the galaxy? No. We need to take back over our place in this world. I think you're right there. Uh, go ahead, mark an XP. Does your scavenge choice still hold true? I believe so. I believe everyone still will provide me with tribute. Okay. Then mark another XP. And uh, that marks out all of the session in stuff. So we'll just move to our normal, non-mechanical stars and wishes. I know that we're right at the butt of time. Does anybody need to go? Or uh, if so, we'll have you go first. Okay, let me go a few minutes over. I appreciate it. Uh, let's, who, who'd like to go first? With, with, uh, we start with wishes so they'll get end with stars who'd like to go first with wishes i'll hop in with wish uh i wish that i had um i had i had the vibe that i could have chosen to go towards ferret and alan um if i had just thought clearly about where that was and i kind of felt that multiple times so i guess my wish was that uh i had acted on that and kind of forced the four of us together um when I when it kept coming back to me and I just fumbled the ball on that one. So uh, I guess a, f a future wish from that, that would be, I hope we all get together soon. That's a great wish to have, Cody. I like it. Uh, who'd yeah, like to I'd endorse that. I, th okay. I think that we need to weave these two stories together somehow. Yeah, I will, uh, you know, that same wish of getting together. I also want to see how Milo takes over the gang now. I want to see how that plays out in uh, Dathomir. Yeah, and how that's going to really make life really complicated for us 
if only Rex was still in charge. Who ever thought that that would be an opinion? Steven, do you have any wishes? Um, yeah, so I also had the wish for how to get the group together, and I was as, as smart as Cody. I was like, how can I get that to happen? I'm like, I can't figure out how to get it to happen in the story, so um, I wish, you know, I hope we do that soon. Um, another one is, uh, oh, I didn't, I wasn't sure exactly what that uh, Manifest the Maelstrom move did. It didn't seem like there was any role, and it did, it gave me a lot of narrative control, and it did a lot of damage. I think going forward, I'd like to see more collateral damage from that or some consequences from it. Um, oh, oh, don't worry. Oh, yeah. There, there yeah, you be. think that those TIE fighters didn't see what happened? Oh, oh no, no. Yeah, okay. I think that they did, but um, I was thinking more along the lines of collateral damage as in, oh, it hurts us or it hurts the people around us or something oh, like that. It, it certainly it certainly will. I agree yeah. with you that, that is, it's an environ. Uh, I just happened to logic out number one first session Deborah two, first time we'd seen it, Deborah three, it felt narratively that they weren't near you. But yes, in the future, you you whip that out and a lot of people will get hurt that you don't Good. want hurt. Um I guess I'd like to, you know, I'm I'm personally I'm kind of walking that fine line of trying to figure out how do I be super weird and haughty and like uh, you know, all this stuff is natural, but still get together with the group. So mm -hmm. I hope that at least there's been enough of a connection with Bayo, and I can make a connection with the other characters as well as we go forward. Um, and the other wish that I have is next Sunday, I have to leave about 15 minutes before the end of the session. Okay. So I I don't know if I'll let you know. I'll try and remind you next uh, next Sunday. Okay. Um, and I don't want to shorten the session, so I might just drop out and then send any wishes or stars or anything like that afterward. I think that's what we'll do. It's just like we'll run the session to full, but we'll we'll demarcate a point where you can and and duck out early. Perfect. Thank you so much. I really You're welcome. It. Thanks for letting us know ahead of time. I will forget, and you will remind me tomorrow or, or in a week, and then we'll still do the same thing I just said. Uh, as you went to last with wishes, you could do first with stars. Do you have any stars to hand out, Stephen? Um. Yeah. So, uh, I found I found this whole setting on Dathomir to be very evocative. So thank you very much for setting that up. Um, and um, I liked all of the characters and how they brought together. I want, especially I want to thank Cody for, you know, bringing together this Knight Brother who's unfamiliar with the area. So he has a certain amount of, I don't know, naivete or something like that. So I, I like that take on that character. That's really cool. I enjoyed seeing um, uh, Yuka you know basically come out and um kick some ass but the dice roller didn't help us much so basically get taken out and then cricks come you know i like seeing that interplay because those characters knew each other um especially so far i think that cricks's heart showed very much so in the very beginning of his opening session or opening scene that was really nice it was all really good to see so yeah I'm looking forward to seeing more. Good, good. Thanks, Steven. Uh, Sawyer, Ferret, you are up next. Yeah, uh, I really like Bayo's entire vibe of like this 90s surfer, Zabrak, who's uh, suddenly <laughs> come back to find like everyone, like all about his people and his uh, history. It just like the entire thing, the way you say vibes, the entire it's part yeah, i grew up in the 90s so it's just those are my kids movies it's nostalgic and uh i agree with uh steven on how cricks is just like the heart showed immediately and it's like someone who can do violence uh, uh but knows that it's not the answer to everything and it's a really good uh solid start to that and uh i like sanders like i got a feel for something you can you can get away it'll make you look weak no 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 never look weak destroy everything to look strong that's what you do and you could uh, as you could player i can get behind that awesome thank you ferret uh alan uh yeah can i give you a start rich because i think uh when when i use that um against the odds move and it comes to you making a choice 
Uh, I, I thought it was a very smart move to then cut to the other players to see whether they they could whether there was a way you could connect them back that either they might be a uh, a piece of amazing luck or an unexpected ally. So I thought it was very cool that you didn't make the decision. You went to see what else was happening in the story to, so that you had the, you know, you knew which tools were at your disposal. So I thought it was an excellent kind of uh, masterclass in how to pause the move and come back to it. Spot Thank on. you. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I've played the volatile in this game and 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 I thought you could, you know, if in doubt, tear the robot's arm off. You know, it's, it's kind of, it's, why wouldn't you? Um, uh, yeah, and I like the interplay between Sin and Bio, the wannabe and the wannabe in charge. Um, I, I thought that was a nice, uh, a nice to and fro. Um, and 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 I, you know, I'm interested where the balance with in that relationship goes because because um, because Bio has a very significant card up his sleeve. Um, given that we know that that Sin is not the only Wolf of the Maelstrom in this game uh and and you know showing someone's inner violent wolf uh is going to be uh an interesting card to play again i think so no i i, that, that, I thought that all went very well i enjoyed it a lot thank you good thank you alan last but not least cody uh, yeah, I uh, also want to give you a big star, Rich. I think Apocalypse World, you know, I've only played it a handful of times. Uh, and I, I constantly like looking at the playbooks, I have a hard time reconciling how it becomes Star Wars because the playbooks are so flavorful for the setting that's built for. It. And you do a great job of picking a world that it fits well. And I think through play, kind of molding those moves into where they need to go. Um, similarly, a big star, I think, to everybody. You guys, Ferret, you, you knew the rules for this really well. So hearing other folks with a handle on it helps me to kind of put those rules together. And I, I really appreciate that. Um, Crix, I, Alan, I love your characters all the time. They're always bastards with a heart of gold. Uh, well, and sometimes maybe a heart just for gold. But uh, I, I love having them in, in, in the games. Uh, Ferret, Yuka, Absolute brawler. When you and Alan, uh, when you two took the shovel to the guy, I, that was brutal. I loved it. That was the exact vibes that I was looking for from that. And Stephen, well, I'm very excited for our characters who are essentially the blind leading the blind um, when it comes to what it is to be a night sister and brother and force users on Dathomir. So uh, I'm, I am very excited for that kind of, it, it, it almost, it's almost enough from like, this should be a, 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 we should make new characters, Stephen, and we should, these two should go be a different game that Rich has to GM for us. <laughs> but um, yeah, so stars all around. It was, it was, a, it was a great time. Uh, oddly enough, I got some weird Far Cry vibes from Bayo. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever played the Far Cry series. Uh, uh, I've, I've played a little bit, watched a bit more. But the whole like frat boy doesn't know what he's up to, but super into like, I'm going to learn about my history. Very point break, as uh, as Ferret said, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. It's lovely. I really need to have some red hot chili peppers do a cameo and uh, <laughs> so, so we can make the circle complete. This is, I knew it was going to be an all star cast, but uh, wow, you guys. Oh, so, so, so much fun running the session. And I love that we as players were like, yeah, this, this Rex guy seems like a Billy badass. Uh, he's going down and embrace that. And it's like more interesting than if Rex had not gone down. But I was perfectly fine with, uh, you know, him putting a hurt on you guys, maybe killing somebody. Uh, but but then a shovel happened, so now we know where our story is, and we'll see how Milo, who doesn't value her brother's death properly, handles a gang. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. I just add another be... another star to the game because I think it's really clever when life becomes untenable. There are options. Oh yes. So yes. so I think that that frees your hand as MC to to you know to unleash hell. Yes, you have definitely taught me that there is no need, there is no bad outcome from a PC dying in Burned Over because the life untenable is so interesting. So very interesting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yay. This was great. 
great, great job, everybody. Thank you so much for playing with me. I can't wait for us to continue on next week. And with that, I'll bring the recording to a close.